Hey, welcome. I'm going to show how I put together a little, uh, a single shot from a Unity scene. In this particular one, I'm going to have a fade in of an anime background. So here is the sort of final effect I'm after, is to get this sort of fade in effect. Bit of a hint, there's a big rectangle behind Sam, and that's going to fade in using the alpha channel. So I'm using the sequences package in Unity, and the sequences package creates timelines for you. It's basically what it does. And so I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call it fade in. Normally I call it a shot number. I'm going to delete this after I'm finished. And so I'm going to pick the fade in scene. It's very important to put this little lock icon on in the timeline track. Otherwise it keeps jumping it around the place, but you're going to just click in the timeline. Great. And so we've got the empty scene, just got all of the background location, which is a prefab I've got created up above, but there's no sound. Now to make life a bit quicker for myself, I've created a little window, not very pretty, but what it does is it can drop a character into a scene and then I need a cinema machine camera and I need a main camera. I find it's easy to always create a cinema machine camera for every sequence I create. We've got Sam in the scene, we've got to get him into the right place. One of the advantages of a little drop in is I always drop him on the floor so I don't have to worry about the height, um, but I do have to get him correct. Now I need his feet in front of the chair because I'm going to make him sit down. Uh, gotta move him a bit sideways. So there's a chair behind him and his rotation got messed up when I dropped him in. So I'm just going to rotate him so he's facing forward. Move a little bit. Sorry for this messing around, but this is some of the stuff that I really have to do. And oh. And the other thing that my drop-in does is it actually drops in a, um, animation timeline for me. So normally you just drag down, it would create one for you or just an animation track. I want to make sure that this has got track offsets, a scene offsets. It's very important because when it goes dropping uh, animation clips on here, he'll jump off to the animation clip location, not remember where he is unless you set scene options. So now I'm going to go find an animation clip or sit. I think this chair is a medium, is a medium. So I'm going to drop that down here and hey, yeah, getting pretty good. So he's sitting on the chair and what we want to do is look at him from the front. So what I normally do is I use the mousing around here to sort of get him as a shot. I basically want, that's why I've got this window about the same size as this window. I then pick the cinema machine camera and I use a line with view. And that's how I usually position the camera. I can do further fine adjustments, it's actually a camera here object in the scene. Great. So now how do I get the image dropped in behind? Well, one way of doing it is to drop a plane in. The only problem is that with the plane, you can drop a material in on the plane and you can see it, but to animate the fading, you've got to adjust the alpha and the, the material is an asset on disc. So anything else using the same material would also get an animated. So a better way in my humble opinion is to create a, what we're going to do is create a canvas. And underneath the canvas, we're going to create a raw image. And by doing this, oh, there's raw, there we go, raw image. And by doing this, the raw image is going to point to just a bitmap file directly on disk. And I can animate the properties of this raw image object to make it go transparent. However, canvases are really designed, you see that little box here, is designed to go on the screen in front of everything. And so what we've got to do is change the canvas space into world space. I want it to be inside the scene. And then it's jumped off onto Lululand. What you can do is select the canvas and hit Control Alt F. And it's put the canvas here um, back in that scene. It's not rotated the right way. So we're going to fiddle with the rotations, make it around the right way. I often do the quick rotate and then I come up here and have a look. So lane 94, okay, we'll make that 90. But the image will be way too big. So what I do is I come and set all the values to one on both the image and the raw image. And what that's doing is one for both of them is getting it to about the right scale for the scene. And then I can get in here, lock the scale around, just sort of zoom in up and down a little bit, just to make sure it covers and gets the right sort of space. So now I've got an image behind. What I'm going to do is I've got a folder of some backgrounds to grab. So let's grab this yellow starburst. 
I'm going to drop that into, here's the raw image and it's got a texture field. So just dropping this JPEG file into the texture field and I got the stars in the background. Cool. And this is where I might come back and have a little bit more of a look at the scale factor and sort of say, oh, let's get a little bit more of a pattern to fit in. I haven't got the camera exactly lined, so that's why things are a little bit out of alignment, but it's good enough. Cool. So now what we want to do is to actually animate it is we've got the color picker and the A or the alpha channel at the bottom is the value we want to animate from nothing through to full. Now you might notice it's a little bit blurred and that's because the main camera I've put uh, depth of field on. So I'm just going to turn that off. Come back over here. And so now what we want to do is animate the background. So we're going to take the raw image, drop it down, create an animation track, turn on recording. And what we want to do then is we're going to start changing the properties of it, but we're going to start off at nothing. Now, because I got the record value, if you change the, the value or we'll change it, but the other way you can do it is come up here and say, um, add key will set a new value or update key will update it. So that was a value of zero. Over here, I'm going to come, I'm going to set the alpha value up to the full value. And because the recording is on, it's saving these little values in the timeline. And so as I go through the timeline, it's animating the alpha value from zero up to one, which is the full strength. Now the fade in, I'm going to come up to the parent scene because this is too short, really. I'm going to just stretch that out in the parent sequence, which is my called location, which is at the school. Um, and then I've got my shot. And so now I've got a bit more space to work. But what you can also do is come in here and uh, convert it to a track. Uh, I often do this. I find these ones easier because now I can slide it around and I can move it and control when it's going to fade in and it's going to hold the new value. Cool. Let's try and just for the bit more fun, I'm going to add an override track and I want him to put his hand up behind his head. It's a little bit sheepish. So we're going to drop this in here. I'm going to grab this first track. And the problem is that now, oh, it's taken over. You can see uh, here he's putting his hand behind his head, but how do I keep him sitting down while doing it? Well, this is where avatar masks come in. So this uh, override track has got an avatar mask, but I didn't pick one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick it's just off the screen, sorry, but it's called top half of body and an avatar mask. So I've created an avatar mask. And so what it means is the bottom half of the body is controlled by this first one, which is a sit. Um, but you might notice there's a bit of a jump there to there because I didn't start at the beginning. So I can slide it back to the beginning, of course. You can also hold down control and drag the edge and it'll do a blend. And so far so good. Only problem is he's leaning back into the image behind it. Oh, great. So not what we want at all. And basically I've put the image too close to him. So we come over to here, let's do a move. And we just move it back a little bit further. Move it up a little bit higher, but you see I'm having a little bit of trouble. And so this is where it come back in. I'll take the raw image and we're going to scale it up a little bit bigger to be safe. A little bit hacky. Uh, it's just a matter of anything is, if it looks good, it is good. Okay. Let's do an, uh, I'm going to do another add override track. And this time I've got a grin and I want him to grin with his eyes closed. And so. I'm going to blend that one in as well. And so what the idea is, I'm going to sit back and grin. And if I didn't like to sort of timing, this is where turning this into a clip down here was it. Uh, it doesn't look so good. And so I'm just going to fiddle around with it until it's sort of. And I'm going to say, oh, it's too far away. I'm going to come too long, come back there. So I'm just editing the animation clip. And voila. So that is how I can fade in a sort of a fancy background. I mean, you can still have him in context sitting on his desk.